All right, so let's plop open Google and we can go to Docker Hub. And all right, so what we are looking for is an image that already comes with Node and NPM all installed. So I'm just gonna type in Node right here and boom, look at this. So the first one that pops up is the Node image. Now again, whenever we install Node, NPM is going to come along with it. And ooh, look at all these juicy versions we can download. All right, so the key thing to take away from this is yes, there already is an image with Node and NPM installed and it's called Node. So now what we can do is go to nano docker file. We can remove Alpine and instead type in node. Now something I want to point out, whenever we install node just like this, it's going to pull down the latest node image and by default, it's going to come with a lot of things that we really don't need. <laughs> especially in this application since it's like the most boring basic application ever. So as a little tip, and this is just a generic Docker thing as well. Whenever you see the word Alpine, it basically means in Docker language, the most stripped down basic version of anything. So when you just run Alpine straight up, it's just gonna get the most basic stripped down initial image. Now what we are going to do is we are going to use Node is our base image. Now, instead of the version, if we actually run Alpine as the version, what this is saying is, okay, we wanna use that node image like we were already intending to do. However, don't just give us the latest bloated version. We want the most stripped down basic version of that image. So that's what this is doing. And now let me just save this and all right. So now let's try building it again. So docker build period and see if we have any better luck this time. Okay, so it looks like NPM was going great, but what is this thing? Ideal tree already, ideal tree? I didn't even say anything about tree. I don't even like trees. All right, so before I get too worked up, let me just go ahead and plop back into our docker file and we can see if we can figure out what the issue is. Now this, is actually a concept that I wanted to cover in the next tutorial whenever we were talking about working directories. But basically, you know how we have these keywords right here from, run, command, so on and so forth. There is another keyword called work dir. And what this does is it sets the working directory for any of these other commands that you run. So by default, whenever we just say from node alpine, and then we start running these commands, these commands are going to be ran in like the root directory. Now we typically don't want to do that because the root directory <laughs> is not where you want to be putting like all your application folders and files and source code, so on and so forth. You usually, usually want to put it in app or user directory. So what we are going to do is we are going to set our working directory as user app. Now, again, what this is going to do is it's going to basically whenever we install all those dependencies and move our source code over, it's going to put it in this location rather than our root. And this is probably going to differ depending on your base image. But I do know for node Alpine that this is the it's a location that works fine. So again, we may have another tutorial to cover working directory this keyword specifically. But for now, again, just want to give you the quick and dirty of it. So now let me exit out of this. Yes. Okay. So let's try this yet again. Docker build. Come on, baby. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Okay. So we don't see any red. So that's a good thing. But oh, what is this? Failed running. OMG. What now? Okay. Let me see if I can pluck something out of here. What is this? No such file directory. Open package.json. So apparently Docker isn't aware that I created this package.json file, but here, let me just clear. Okay, there it is. Ah, uh, you know what? I remember now from the last tutorial where Docker is currently unable to find this package.json file because even though, and we can probably just see the contents of Docker file right here, is even though we set it up to say, okay, this is our base image, this is where we wanna run all of our commands from, 
uh, run npm install, npm start to Docker, this is its universe. It says, okay, at what point did you tell me to include those other files? And we're like, oh yeah, we, uh, I guess we didn't do that, did we? So my bad. So now let's <laughs> hop back in to our Docker file and include those. All right, so before we run this run command, npm install, because what this command actually does is it installs all of those dependencies, but it's gonna look for that in a package.json file. So at this point in time, whenever Docker looks at this instruction, it needs to have that package.json file. So in order to include those files in our Docker image, what we're gonna be doing is copying them over from our current working directory to our Docker image. And remember the keyword for that is just to say, copy these files from our local machine over to our Docker image right like that. All right, so one more time, it's gonna start with this base image, gonna use this is our working directory to run all of these commands. It's gonna copy all of the files over, and I'll show you. It's gonna copy these files over to our Docker image. And then what it's gonna do, in case you guys don't remember, it's gonna install those dependencies and then run npm start. Okay, so now, one more time, fingers crossed, let's go ahead and run docker build. And instead of just including that period, because you know what, I'm actually pretty confident that this is gonna work out this time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tag this image. And again, the name convention is just your docker username. And then we can just call this image Bucky's website. And then we'll just tag it as latest and then period as our build context right after that. And hopefully, let's see if this works. Okay, so f installing, come on, baby. No whammy, no whammy. Boom, look at that. All right, so not sure if it worked yet, but um, let's just go ahead and see if it works. So Docker run, the new Boston, what it, Bucky's website, and unable to find image, and I probably had a typo, so Docker image. LS, okay, Bucky website, forgot the S, but that's cool, that's cool. All right, so Docker run the image Bucky website, I guess <laughs> we'll just go with that. And okay, there we go. So this is looking good. Uh, looks like it run that start command, the default command was fine, which was just a, you know, a synonym for node index.js. And just like we instructed it to, whenever this application starts up, it's gonna console log out listening on port 8080. So now let me go ahead and let's go back here and let's just paste in that address, 127.001.8080 and, okay, wait a minute. Listen on port 8080. Okay, I'm on 8080, port 8080. Okay, <sighs> this isn't good. Uh, what's going on here? Well, Docker is telling me that this application is indeed running on port 8080, but I just opened my browser. I'm on port 8080 and nothing's showing up. So what the heck? All right, so let's shut this down. Let me clear it out. So this is what is happening. Even though Docker told us, yep, application running on port 8080, whenever we went there in our browser, nothing was showing up. This is because whenever we go to this location in our browser, it's trying to look for a process that's running on our local machine. Now remember, that process, which was supposed to be serving the web application, that was running, but it was running on Docker, the Docker container, which is like a computer within our computer. So, okay, this is an interesting problem. So basically, if you can imagine this terminal right here, acting as like a mini computer within our computer, which you can look at it like uh, the desktop background if you want. How do we say whenever we are just trying to develop an application as like a front end developer to use Docker's port 8080 instead of our computer's port 8080? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is when port mapping comes into the picture. So what we need to essentially instruct Docker to do whenever it's running the container is to route all traffic from computers port 8080 to Docker's 
port ADAD. So how do we do that? It's actually pretty easy. So I'm going to run this run command again, but instead of just running it exactly like we did before, what I'm going to do is include a flag called P. So this flag essentially maps a port from your local machine, which we want to say, yeah, we can just run 8080 on our local machine. This process is going to map to the Docker container port 8080. So now whenever on our local machine, we're running an application that tries to hit 8080, it's going to basically see that is Docker's port 8080. So just that we can verify that everything is working. Let me hit enter. And okay, it looks like everything is the same, but now these ports should be mapped. So I'm gonna pop back open my browser, refresh, and all right, you may not be able to see it, but it does indeed say, hey now, brown cow. And there you go. That is how you run a very, very simple project. And I wanna say real project, you know, this isn't much of a project, but we can pretend. That is how you would structure a real project using Docker. And again, a lot more concepts to build on top of that. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you later.